right, I'm looking at atomic structure, ways we model solutions to Schrodinger's equation. And the principal quantum number is the energy level or the energy shell. The next quantum number of our four are called sublevels or subshells. So L is a sublevel. Whoops, sublevel. It's also called the azimuthal quantum number because it gives us the shape of the region in space with its 90% chance of finding an electron with a given energy. And we give it the letter L. And typically, if I'm handwriting it, I'm going to make it cursive so it doesn't look like the number one. Now, we want to designate these, and if we're already using numbers one, two, three, and so forth, for our energy level to designate this we you know to use numbers numbers next to numbers next to numbers is confusing so instead scientists use levels uh, letters excuse me that came out of spectroscopy so the first four are s p d and f sharp principal diffuse and either fine or fundamental i've seen it both ways a student came up with a trick. Um, he, he said, you know, stupid people die first, S-P-D-F. So if that's a mnemonic device you need to remember, uh, then hopefully that helps you wrap your mind around it. Now, not every energy level has all sublevels associated with it. Um, and it really depends on how close it is to the nucleus um, and how much space is available for electrons to move without experiencing too much repulsion from other electrons. So the first only has one, the first only has S, N equals two has S and P, N equals three has S and P and D, N equals 4 is S and P and D and F. After that, it starts following the alphabet, G, H, and so forth. And these would all have to represent excited states. Uh, as of today, we've not discovered any elements that would have a ground state in a G or H sublevels. Now, S has a spherical shape. I'll show you some cool pictures of these. P sub levels have a dumbbell shape. And I'll tell you right now, a, a lot of um, end of course exams in high school um, and some college exams, uh, I haven't seen it much in an AP or IB exam, but you should still know these. You should be able to recognize uh, different sub levels by their pictures. And this is an example of these. This is the S, and notice that there's only one of them. These are the P. We'll talk about the fact in a, the next video why there are three P's. These are our D's. There are five of them. And these are our F's. There are seven F's. Now, these are pretty cool pictures. You notice that the D is primarily a clover leaf with one little dumbbell and a satellite. Um, by the time you get to F, and these become increasingly complicated. Now, I'm going to show you one of my favorite websites. Uh, I typically, uh, I've given the website here, but I typically just pop in winter and orbital in the URL and do a search of this and find the site right away. And I want to show you what those look like because these get so cool looking. This is the Winter Orbital Group and they just have the most fun, I think, pictures of atomic orbitals. Um, hopefully you would notice that this is an S orbital. So this is an S, it's a spherical shape. There's only one of those and you're going to find in future videos that those will hold two electrons in every S sublevel. Now let's take a look at our P's. The P's have this dumbbell shape associated with them, which I think is pretty cool. But now watch when I increase N. <clears throat> so I've got the 2P. Let's look at 3P. 
there's still three of them, but they become increasingly more complicated. These would be, this one thing that Orbital doesn't show is they don't really show relative size of these. And these P sublevels here, this outer edge would be further from the nucleus than the two P's would be. And then if we looked at the five P's, again, increasingly more complicated and the outer edges of the five P's, those outer edge would be much further from the nucleus than the fours, than the threes, than the two, and so forth. And if you take a look at these, the D's, so the D's have that clover leaf. There are five of them, and they also get increasingly more complicated. I think it's, you know, very, um, that looks like some sort of space saga movie, and these are little pods that the spaceships would move around. I don't know. I think they're really cool. I'm sick that way. Okay, these are the F's, and there are seven of them. And then, the, and those are pretty cool, but look, you get to see the G's. And I don't often see pictures uh, that show these G's. Now, remember, a G orbital, the G would represent excited. Now, I can have F's and D's also be excited, but G's can be only an excited state electron. So I, I just think those are fun to, um, to, to visualize and, and hopefully that gives you an idea of just how much fun these electron you know, playgrounds uh, can be. So those were the winter orbitals and now certainly nobody is going to um, want you to be drawing these. Um, but I think uh, that if you can envision the simple drawings of S, P, D, and F, um, that will help you. And what's really going to blow your mind is we're going to find that the periodic table does a beautiful job of laying these out for us. So um, until then, uh, I hope you're really enjoying your journey of chemistry. And for all my kiddos, see you soon.